a major issue that concerns a lot of voters. Something that we talk about as South Africans all the time is obviously the issue of corruption and how does corruption impact governance. Um, the next clip that we've put together, or the next package that we've put together here at Soweto TV, um, specifically deals with that issue. I'm sure we're all looking forward to casting our ballots, but perhaps even more so looking forward to putting the speculation, the campaigning, the noise of the last couple of weeks and months behind us and having a closer look at what South African voters genuinely want. In anticipation of the elections, we had produced four scenarios in which we modeled the potential outcome and the political and economic impact um, of these scenarios. Our baseline scenario being the ruling African National Congress, despite its many governance failures and its uh, association with corruption, uh, losing its majority but earning enough votes to form a minority government with the help of smaller parties. This presupposes a return in the range of 46 to 50 percent, um, with potential coalition partners being the Vincata Freedom Party on even smaller parties, one and two seat parties like Good, Al Jamaa, the ATM party, if they in fact return to parliament. These parties will simply not have enough negotiating power in order to convince the ANG its government's direction dramatically. And so one would seize under the scenario is continued slow progress towards um, fixing problematic state-owned entities, perhaps some limited greening of the economy, but still the kind of policy inertia that has characterized the Ramaphosa administration to date um, and has seen South Africa stuck in this low growth cycle. The scenarios two and three are presupposed on the same premise that the ANC does so poorly, earning between 40 and 45 percent of the return of vote. Um, that they are forced to go into a coalition government with one of the main opposition parties, those being the leftist populist economic freedom fighters, or alternatively the Liberal Democratic Alliance. And this particular scenario sees some of the more positive outcomes um, in terms of the modeling. Um, the Democratic Alliance convinces the ANC to abandon some of its more status impulses and continue on the liberalization path that the party started to be fair to them during the COVID-19 pandemic and even deepened last year when the Ramaphosa administration reached out to the private sector and established work streams with CEOs from some of the country's largest parties. This would see um, liberalization in the energy sector continue, perhaps even accelerate, and perhaps the same model applied to other parts of the economy and other troubled state-owned entities like Transnet, for instance. The alternative, um, the ANC EFF scenario, um, sees the government then veer in an opposite direction. The EFF forces the ANC to really lean into its state impulses and continue to see and position the state as central to the developmental state. Um, State-owned entities playing a massive role. Um, and perhaps even some of the gains, some of the liberalization we've seen in recent times being reversed, some IPP contracts being canceled and perhaps spoiling for a fight with uh, mining companies, for instance, um, pushing for um, changes to labor legislation, things of that nature. The fourth scenario is the unlikely scenario, the one that um, the polling companies agree with us is, is unlikely to, to, to shake out, but that sees a liberal coalition coalescing around the DA, earning enough of the votes with the ANC um, fading into the background. This liberal government does have some positive outcomes. Um, they very much um, open to opening up the economy and involving the private sector. But it also, of course, comes with very significant political risk. There's pushback from a ruling party and it's hundreds of officials across government that have been in power for 30 years. Um, there's pushback from some of the more um, revolutionary elements in the, on the political spectrum, pushback also from labor unions opposed to a liberalization of the labor market, privatization initiatives, things of that nature. Um, and so it is also the scenario that will probably spook markets the most. It's not anticipated um, and comes with um, a lot of unanswered questions. So those being the four scenarios, we still think that in all likelihood the ANC will earn enough of the vote to form that minority government. Um, it's very much a continuity scenario for us. Um, and so attention will then turn thereafter to, to 2029. And political parties have insisted that it's all about 2024, 
but it is perhaps more about 2029. The ANC losing its majority will be a paradigm shifting moment in our democracy. Um, and even if they remain in government, um, it does set us up for some exciting changes moving forward. Um, the, the political landscape is indeed shifting. And even if 2024 doesn't prove to be that election, um, it's undeniable that the country is moving into a, a, a direction, um, some uncharted territory. And we will keenly observe these changes and provide comment along the way.